So that's our, those were our hypotheses, right? And so we decided to explore them as any good science, scientists would in a large set of data. So we pulled down a bunch of data from Instagram. And uh, we do that because it's primarily a visual social media platform. has 800 million active monthly users, 95 million shared photos, 4.2 billion likes per day, and 70% of U.S. brands now use Instagram. And that was uh, back when we collected these stats, which was a few years ago at this point, right? Um, we pulled down 633 active brands selected using this digital IQ index, which kind of gives you a measure of how active they are in the digital space. Um, they, we use the public Instagram API, which uh, unfortunately doesn't really exist to a large extent anymore, uh, but we gathered over 150,000 posts. And per brand, we collected all the firm generated contact to content between January 5, 2015 and, uh, sorry, April Sorry, May 5th, 2015, and April 30th, 2016. Those uh, European date formats always throw me for a loop for a second. Um, we looked at the brand profile, the industry, and the number of followers. And per post, we looked at the number of likes, number of comments, if there were any filters applied to the image, the date it was posted, the captions, and of course, the actual image itself. Right? Um, and we operationalized this by looking at these feature complexity measures that we talked about before, right? So we looked at the color complexity entropy, we looked at the luminance complexity entropy and the edge density, right? And these were pretty much all methods that have been developed uh, in the computer science realm for kind of analyzing and looking at images. We then used that pre-trained deep neural net to quantify the quantity of objects that were in there using an image net uh, uh, setup that had been developed. And we used the word net object similarity measure to calculate the similarities between the detected objects. And finally, we use this Rosenholtz ar ar um, uh, um, algorithm to determine the visual complexity of the image. So we took all of those features and all of those numbers that we put into, and we built a, a very long kind of model to try and predict the number of likes of an image based upon all these other aspects. And so here's the feature complexity aspects, right? Color, luminance, edge density. Here's the design complexity, quantity of edge objects, the similarity of objects, visual clutter, right? And then we also looked at brand specific numbers like the number of followers the user had, the, the brand had, time of day, things like that. This brand specific, the number of followers is an important control because we were assuming that bigger brands might have different policies than lower brands in terms of the amount of effort they can put in designing their Instagram images. Um, and so you can see this all here in the long, long binomial regression model, right, that we developed very similar to the regression models I took you through early on in the class. Uh, and a lot of times I find it helpful to break down these regression models into what each component is doing. So the dependent variable was the log of the number of likes. And why log? Because it's a skewed distribution. And so we want to kind of focus um, on, a, you, it's nice to have a more normal distribution as your output, right, uh, measure. Here's all those feature complexity measures, and we looked at both their regular uh, various, so color, color squared, luminance, luminance squared, uh, edge, and edge squared, right? Um, here's the design complexity, so how many unique objects, the dissimilarity, and then we looked at the interaction. The nice thing about this interaction term is it's basically a pro product for, it's a, it's a, it's a reference to the number of unique objects that are in the space, right? Um, and then that visual clutter term as well. And then of course we have the control variables for the brand fixed effects. We have control variables for time of day, weekday and season, the strong and affect the amount of likes you get. And we have control variables that are post, post specific, right? What filter do they use? What tag, how many tags do they have? Things along those lines, right? So here's a log transform distribution, the number of likes, and you can see that it kind of has this nice, almost uh, um, uh, normal distribution to it. Not quite, still a little skewed, uh, but that means that that's a good, because of the way that a lot of regression models work, it's useful to have that kind of a distribution when you're building your regression model. Um, so the results, uh, we did find an inverted U-shaped relationship between feature complexity in terms of luminous complexity and edge density and lighting. Um, it turns out, Color complexity, we didn't, we don't describe too much in this particular set of results because it turned out to be very similar to uh, luminance, right? Um, so you can kind of get the same results from either color or luminance depending upon how you include them. Uh, but we tell that it's a U-shaped relationship because 
it, we got a positive beta coefficient on the first variable, but on the squared, it's negative, meaning that it's increasing, but at a decreasing rate, right? And so that's kind of how you know that you have this uh, inverted U-shape relationship there. Um, the higher number of objects leads also, in terms of design complexity, led to a higher number of likes. And visual clutter actually does have a negative influence on liking. So again, uh, we supported all of our hypotheses that we had in this space, right? Um, and the, for the full distribution, right, of all the effects, you can see them here, right? Um, things like um, spring, summer, and fall all had a negative impact. So people are more likely to like things during the winter, right? People are more likely to like things on the weekend. Uh, they're more likely to like things... Um, uh, well, evening and night had a positive effect, but small. Um, uh, afternoon had a large positive effect, but it was it was it was insignificant, right? Um, and so you can see some of the other effects that happen here. Um, now, from the U-shape relationship, we can derive actually the optimal level of edge density and luminous complexity you would want in your image. Uh, and if the future complexity is set to its theoretical optimum, this would lead to an increase of seven hundred and eighty-six likes on an average of 4,000 likes that we observed in our data sets, that's a substantial increase in the amount of engagement you get. We also kind of just played around with the Instagram filters. We said, well, what if you just applied the best filter to this image? And that we showed gave you around an increase of 125 likes. So for a single button press, you're getting 125 likes. That seems like a pretty good result, right? We also did a predictive validity test. So we, again, split the data into an 80% training set and 20% uh, testing set, much like we've done throughout this course. And we did a five times cross validation where we applied the same model, trained the model on the 8%, predicted the 20%. And we got an average rank correlation of 0.92 of the predicted number of likes and the true number of likes in the test set. We weren't predicting the exact number of likes because we're gonna be off by a little bit here and there, but we're predicting the order of the images and what the order of the images would be in terms of the most popular to the least popular. And we got an extremely high correlation of 0.92, which is a good result in that space. So what's the implication of all this work, right? Well, feature complexity is needed to stop the consumer and hold the intention of that user, right? But a high number of dissimilar objects detect detected leads to an increase in liking, but it has to be arranged in an orderly fashion, right? If it's arranged in a cluttered fashion, people tend to move on and not like that image. Uh, we feel like this really kind of lends to some managerial implications about how you might design your images, right? Um, feature complexity needs to be in this Goldilocks area, meaning not too much variation, but not too simple either. And design complexity needs to be considered as you're composing the photo. And by that we mean, you know, it could be actually arranging the objects or it could be just choosing the best angle. And as we said, applying the right Instagram filter will increase the number of likes by 3% within seconds. So that's a great result. In future research, we're gonna talk about how you can move beyond social media likes to measure real engagement, like how much do people actually engage with the image. Uh, potentially in some of the work we're doing right now, we're actually using uh, fMRIs to kind of model some of that, uh, that engagement level. Um, and we feel like we can improve this by using better models. Um, we just use an off the shelf deep learning, learning neural net. We could train it to Instagram data uh, and kind of make it better in that respect. Um, and, you know, we could explore images on a website, for instance, and that's some of the work we're looking at right now. We could look at targeted personalized social media, and we could carry out experiments to actually confirm what we're saying, right? So right now, everything we've done is kind of looking at data that's already been collected. But what if instead we had a, a quick tool that kind of could take two images and said, this one's better than this one. And then we could put them up in alternate weeks or alternate days of the week on Instagram and see which one actually does better. So this is not the only work I'm doing with AI in my research group right now. I'm also looking at things like automatic latent segmentation of Twitter and social media users based on just social data. Uh, a great example of this is, can we determine if someone is a bot or a troll or not just based upon their patterns of posting and when they put their um, content up online? Um, and we look at other identification strategies for bots and examining strategies to combat bots even, right? So can we, um, can we do things that would dissuade people from interacting with bots? Uh, in terms of the neural net stuff, we're working with Teradata and online travel agencies to explore additional use cases of visual analytics at scale. We can imagine hyper-personalization. Imagine that you go on to 
uh, book a hotel and I know who you are. I know how many people you're traveling with, right? I know what days you're going to be there. And I figure out exactly based upon all those criteria, what hotel image I should best serve you to book this hotel, right? Um, then I can kind of really hyper-personalize the results that you're getting. Um, and, you know, I'm also using some of these techniques now to build simulations of social media users, right? Because really what would be really cool to know is could I simulate all of, say, Twitter? Could I simulate what kinds of content people are going to put up and when they're going to put it up? And then I can use it to do things like figure out how to best combat bots or best combat fake news that's spreading throughout that social media space. So um, this AI stuff you've been learning this course, I think it actually has a real legs. I'm working with it myself, uh, and I hope you find some value of it in your own business uh, decision making. Take care.